you have your Bibles with you this morning, you'll be turning to the book of Genesis. Genesis 35 is where we'll be preaching from this morning. And uh, while you're turning there, it's the first Sunday of our new year. And you think about all that happened in 2019 and uh, everything that the Lord brought the church through. We ought to be able to give you praise for it. We lost from the downs and uh, we... Uh, we were to give you praise. Genesis chapter 35, and we're going to begin reading in verse 9. Genesis 35, beginning in verse 9. The Bible says, And God appeared unto Jacob again when he went out of Padanaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name, and be called his, and he called his name Israel. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him, and Jacob set up a pillar in the, in the place and where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering uh, thereon, and he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him Bethel. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way. He came to Ephraim, and Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your watch care. Lord, we praise you for all that you do. Lord, for having us in your hand and uh, for uh, guiding us each and every day the way that you do. God, we praise you for that. This morning we pray that you come in and fill this house with your presence. Dear Lord, we pray that you'd send the Holy Ghost this way and make this building a place that it might dwell in and that it would be exceeding with our hearts. Lord God, we pray for the lost that meets with us every Sunday, Lord, that you'd give them a burden for their own soul, Lord, that you'd awaken their ears uh, to preaching, Lord, that you'd give them a spiritual ear that they might understand what eternity awaits. God, help us together as a people, and we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching this morning, uh, be paralyzed or follow the plan of God. Now, everybody probably has met uh, someone that is paralyzed to some degree that, or the other. I've met some that were paralyzed so badly that they were on ventilators. They had mechanical ventilation to uh, rise their stomach and put air into their bodies. Couldn't even move anything but their eyes. And then I've seen others that may be paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, we, uh, a lot of times the Lord's churches today, what I find is they're paralyzed. They don't move any on their own unless the wind drips them. They don't go either way. And uh, listen, as long as you're content to dwell there, the devil enjoys it. But, uh, you know, this is the thing, too. Uh, paralyzing usually comes from injury. Now, there's a few people that are born paralyzed, but it's very rare. Uh, it comes from the hard knocks that come along the way. Uh, I, I, one of the worst cases of paralysis I ever knew about, and he could move one arm some, uh, he jumped off into the creek and hit his uh, neck on the way down. Now, uh, he got there because of injury, and once you're paralyzed, <laughs> you got to learn to use what you have. And I believe we live in a day and age where people are not interested in that. Uh, they're not interested in making uh, the best of the situation that they live in. But what we as the Lord's people ought to do is simply follow this book and continue on. That's, what, that's the only option we have as the Lord's people. Back to verse 9, and it says, And God appeared unto Jacob again. 
Now, what wonderful thing when God makes His presence known to us. And, and you know, when we see, we think about the appearing of God, we, we think of visually, but you know what? God has been with me time and time again, and I can say He's appeared unto me, not with the fleshly eye, but I know when God's moving, and I know when God's been with me, and that's a precious time. Now listen, it don't happen every day, and some people may tell you, oh, I feel this way all the time. I don't believe them. And the reason I don't believe them is because we got this flesh to contend with, and this flesh is not easily harnessed. It's not easily brought under control. But I have enjoyed a few of those times, and here we find that Jacob is so excited that he has spent time with God that he raises up an altar. See, it was important to him. And you know, have you ever thought sometimes maybe why the Lord doesn't meet with us more is when he does, we're not excited about it. Yeah. We're not glad in it. Oh, here we go again. And, and so many times, I really believe that's the problem. But Jacob, having not experienced this very much, was very excited that God met with him. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob, which means thief. Uh, when, you know, a lot of times when you have children, you think and you kind of break, you knock around in your head, oh, well, you'll name this one, blah, blah, blah. Uh, can you imagine naming your child thief? But we find that fits him to a T. That's exactly what he became. That's exactly what he, he was. He stole his brother's inheritance. He stole his brother's birthright. He, and, and, and that fit him completely to a T. He was a thief. And, that, and we're fixing to see that his name is changed. And not only was his name changed, his personhood was changed. You know what? When someone says they're saved, what we need to look for is the change. You know what? Uh, say people lie, but they feel guilty about it. Uh, say people do things, but uh, the conviction of the Holy Spirit makes them sorrowful that they had done that thing. And that's the difference. So if you never had any trouble sinning, there's something wrong. There's something very desperately wrong. And, and so we find here that Jacob is uh, he is what he is and he enjoys meeting with God and God appeared unto him, Jacob again and he, uh, and when he came out of Padanaram and I want you to see that he one reason that Jacob I believe had this second meeting with God is he left Padanaram that was his command that's where Laban his father-in-law uh, had li he had lived with him 20 years, lived down in sin, like li living in Sodom. And so God brought him out. So when we're obedient, God's going to meet more with us. And so he blessed, uh, uh, he came again. And when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him, and God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob, or thief. Thy name shall not be called any more J Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. So he, get, he gets a name change. Um, and uh, that is a, a name that means fighter, contender. See, uh, I often think about uh, when, when the kids were small and we had uh, contenders of the faith for the little boys. That's what Israel means. It's a contender. You know what a, contend a contender always has to do? Fight. It, it, it's a never-ending thing. A contender continues to go on. You know what? As we're looking at 2020 up in front of us, I wish I could say, hey, it's going to be better. It's going to be smooth sailing. Everything's going to be all right. But you know what? It'll probably be worse this year than it was last year. And I'll take that from the Bible because the Bible says this, Things shall wax worse and worse. You know what? In the morning, we may be seeing World War III. We may declare war on them. And I guarantee you, if we declare war on them, Russia's going to declare war on us. And it's just going to be like a domino effect. But you know what? Uh, 
<laughs> Again, I'm not preaching you a health and wealth. Everything's going to be all right. But listen, I know this. God's in control. God, God is on his throne and he doeth all things well. So you've got to keep contending. You've got to keep going. And you know what? That's a very individualized decision. And, and, and the new year always, always is good to make a determination. You know what? I'm going to do more for Christ this year than I did last year. I'm going to make more of a difference in the life of somebody this year than I did last year. So we are contenders. We are fighters. And that's... Uh, and, and that's what we went from being a thief as a lost person to a contender in the cause of Christ as a saved person. Verse 11, and God said unto him, I am the God, I am God Almighty. Now I want you to see who introduces himself to whom. See, and... Um, and, and, and the world all around us, and you know, this ain't popular preaching, you can tell by looking at the little number that we usually have. But out here in the world, they'll be inviting Jesus into their heart and all that goes with that. But I want you to see who introduced himself. Did Jacob introduce himself to God? No, God came down and said, I am the God Almighty. He introduced himself to Jacob. Listen, let's don't get it out of sequence in 2020 right. just because it's not popular preaching anymore, but let's stick with what the Bible says. And so he had this intercession with God, and he changed his life. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be out of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And every bit of that came to pass. Verse 12, In the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him, and Jacob set a pillar in the place where he had talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. Now, I want you to see that uh, Jacob marks the spot. And you know what? It's important when God does something wonderful to mark the spot. You know what? Uh, when uh, Sarah didn't have cancer, I marked the spot. You know, I said, God's been good to us. Right. That, that, that's a place I marked the spot. And we need to do that. See, you know what? Well, God just don't move like he wants to. No, no, he's still moving. We're just too stupid to see it. We don't have a spiritual eye to say, whoo, God's been good. He spared Sarah from cancer this year. Uh, Brother Downs, as sad as it was, you know what? He went home to be with the Lord, and his memory's back right where it was 40 years ago. God's been good. We've got to set up some landmarks along the way. And, and, and listen, you've got to get off your pity pot and, and just serve God uh, with everything that you have, and God will bless that. And so... He wants you to be remembered, so he sets him up a pillar there. In verse 15. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him Bethel. Now, Bethel got a new name too. Uh, Bethel means uh, place of God. That's what Bethel means. But before that, it was called Luz. And, and, and Luz was the Arabian name. It was the, the... And, you know, everybody, when they think of Bethel... Uh, and I looked on the internet to be sure I wouldn't be teaching you wrong this morning that it's luxurious. and for It's a desert. There's nothing there but sand and dust. And he called it God's with us. This is the place of God. God met with me. So listen, you know what that tells me? It tells me this. Listen, you don't have to be in some kind of luxurious place for God to meet with you. In fact, he might meet with you in a desert. And you know, this is the thing, for, you, for him to meet in the desert, you know what has to happen? You have to get in the desert. 
And that's not always a very pleasant thing to happen, but I, I know it, it, it is granted for our good. And, and so if you end up there in 2020, remember God still meets with you even there. Verse 16. And they journeyed from Bethel. Now, I think it's very interesting because they keep moving. Why do they keep moving? Because God told them to. You know, they set up that pillar. God had met with him. He changed his name to Israel. He changed him from being a, a thief to a fighter to a, to a contender of the faith. And he kept moving. You know what? I bet it was hard to see that pillar go by, wasn't it? But he kept moving. See, this is the thing a lot of people want to do. And I've seen it in my own ministry. And if I'm not careful, I'll have to remind myself with these scriptures. I'll start talking about back in, back in, I mean, and there were some good times. The late 90s, the early 2000s, me and Don, the kids went all over preaching the gospel. And it would be very easy to say, hey, well, you know what? That was 20 years ago now. It's time to move on. It's time to do everything. You know what? That's a nice pillar. And I like to remember it, but there's other things left to do. And if it wasn't that way, God would have already came for us. He, he would have already came for us. So there's got to be more ahead. So he didn't, he didn't just wrap himself around the pillar and boo-hoo. He kept moving because God's plan was to keep on moving. And that's exactly what they did. And they journeyed from Bethel. And there was but a little way to come to Ephraim, and Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing. Now, I, I, love, I love the words in that, as her soul was in departing. See, what I have found with working with people that are sick for years and years, many of them know when it's getting close. Her soul was in departing. My great-grandmother, uh, my uh, I, I always remember this. I, I just remember a little stitch of it because I was only four when she passed away, but she was a very unusual woman, so I can remember some things. And I remember about probably two months before she died, me and Mama and Judy and James were sitting on the porch when the evening was falling. And uh, she said, Jean, some of them called her Jeannie, but she called, she called her Jean. She says, Jean, now when I'm gone, don't get me no flowers. And she, put, she did like this toward us. She says, you give me your flowers while you've been living. And, and she knew. And you know what? I think Rachel knew. Her soul was departing. Rachel knew that she was fixing uh, to go out into eternity, that she was fixing uh, to be gone. And you know what? That might, and it is the inclination of the flesh, whether in death or whether just leaving, to quit. Yeah. See, and I haven't had a wife to die yet. And uh, I. <laughs> Me and Donna has the money on her about living because my health ain't as good as hers. But I think it would be paralyzing. Uh, and, and maybe, I don't think so, you might tell me that, but uh, I don't think I'm any more dependent on my wife than the rest of you men in this room. Uh, but that would be a very difficult thing. Carrying on the ministry after she was gone. And see, that's what was about to happen with Israel. That was what was happening to Jacob. He was, he was about to be in a situation where he could make a decision to continue or he could make a decision to quit. And, and we'll see what, what he does. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor, the midwife said unto her, If you're not... Thou shalt have this son also, and it came to pass as her soul was in departing, and for she died that she called the name, and she called his name Benoni, which means grief, but his father called him Benjamin, which means joy. 
So I want you to see they had two different uh, ideas about this son. And, and you know what? It had been very easy if I had been Jacob or Israel, whichever one, to, to call him grief too. Because listen, I would look at it almost like this. He took my wife's life. But he said, no, this is going to be a joy. It's going to be good. It's going to be favorable. Why? Because he knew God was in it. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things that I, I have made some comments about Rachel in the, pa uh, uh, in the past and I want to give a little more light on uh, because I do think she repented of her idolatry because she, well, he, she did come out uh, uh, her father Laban was an idolater and if you remember when they're making that great escape that Laban goes into her tent and she has the idols hid in her box and she's sitting on the box and she refuses to give up she tells him a lie I, I, the way of a woman is upon me I can't get up and he never looks so we found out two things about her character she was a liar and she was an idolater and, and, and so with, with that in mind, we're going to go back and read the first couple of verses and see what, what God can do. In the first verse of chapter 35, the Bible says, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto me that, uh, that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. And then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with them, Put away the strange gods that are among, among you and be clean and change your garments. Now, I want you to notice a number of things here that he was going back to the place where he had made that little altar years ago when he was escaping from Esau. And remember, he, it says that he used for his pillow a stone and during the night he saw the vision of the ladder hanging down from heaven and angels going up and down. And he got up and he says, I am fearful to be in this place. And he poured some oil over that and made an altar. He was going back there. Now, that would have been a very fearful thing for me. Now, if you, if you remember where we're at in the, in the context of his life, he had just fought an angel for a blessing. Some people think it's Christ. It could have been. But uh, he just had fought an angel for a blessing. And God's beginning to move in him. But to continue this, you've got to be obedient. See, you want to know why the Lord's not blessing more than he is? Well, it takes obedience. Do you think we live in a day and age that God's still not moving young men to preach? Uh, I, I don't believe that. Uh, and I believe the, the preacher should still keep preaching. If, if all you have is a place to preach, is under an oak tree, get under the oak tree and start preaching. See, we are to be movers, not stairs. Not, not, not standing still. We are to continue the work that he has given us to do. And, and so, Jacob gets these directions from God. Now, I want you to see the instructions that he gives his family. And as far as I know, uh, Rachel complies. And Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you. Now, what strange gods are you carrying? Now, uh, this can be a strange god. I'm sure if our forefathers saw us going around doing this, they'd say, Well, man, that's strange. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, when it takes the majority of our time and the majority of our waking hours and the majority of our in energy, it is God. Yeah. It is God. And, and so then, uh, he said, you throw all that out. Get the strange gods from you. And, and you know, uh, I think that's a good thing. You know, years ago in the day, people would think, well, people thought they was crazy in the 70s. Because listen, down, down at Tennessee Ridge, when I was a boy, Tennessee Ridge Baptist Church, first independent Baptist church I ever knew about, man, in the 70s, they meant business with God. You could see them in Houston County and pick them out of a crowd. You knew what, you know what? You knew where they went to church by the way they looked. 
And, you know, and th 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 this is whenever people thought they was really crazy. Now, <laughs> music and albums left over from the late 60s and from the early 70s, they made a big fire out by the, by the church building and they burned every bit of that mess up. People confessing to God, understanding what that junk meant. And, and he said, well, that's stupid. Well, it happened in the New Testament, did it not? So they took their books of sorcery and burned them. Right? And I think that the price was 50 pounds of silver or something like that, 50 pounds of gold. See, if you want something different this year, it's going to cost you something. It, it, it's going to cost you mentally, maybe financially, certainly time. It's going to cost you something if you want something better. So he prepared his family. Then I want you to notice the last thing of his instructions. Change your garments. <laughs> Not popular preaching, is it? Uh, you know what? Uh, we don't have to look like this world. And, and, and you know what? I'm about to the point and sick of people justifying it. You know, I was talking to a man, I'm going to tell you who it was. Uh, actually, I think I was talking to his wife. And uh, she, she says to me, my, wife, my husband wants me to dress that way. And I said, you know what? It doesn't make it right. That's right. It doesn't make it right. So apparently whatever they were wearing wasn't what God wanted them to wear. Right? And you know what? That's always been true, hasn't it? What was man's first idea about clothes? Leaves, right? Yeah. You know what happens to leaves in the wind? Right? I can see why it didn't work, don't you? It, it takes skin. It, it takes some kind of cover. And so we find the very thing, and I'm sure they bought their flashy garments from Laban's house and all their bells and whistles and, 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 and all uh, the way they looked. And God said, change that, get rid of it, because now you're mine. And verse 3, Israel says, And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me this in, in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods, and again, I'm assuming Rachel was in that, and that were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities which were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Now, you know, I've often wondered, why, why were these people scared? Why, why were they fearful? Why were they, why were they upset with that, with that? Because, you know, at that time, there weren't that many of them. Now, when they were leaving, when they were leaving Egypt with four and a half million, yeah, I could see a little bit of fear being raised up. But you know what? At this point, there was only 69 of them. Now, Benjamin will make the 70th, the 70th, the 70th, the 70th, the 70th person. I don't know how to say that. But are you afraid? You must, a town the size of Dover, if a group of uh, 69 people came walking through, would that scare you? I don't think it scared me. But see, the reason it scared them because they knew the presence of God was with them. See, the Bible, little is much when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. And, and so they didn't need four and a half million. Their 69 was fine because God was with them and people were getting out of their ways <coughs> and stepping back uh, for God's people. And they kept going. They followed God's plan. They followed exactly what God wanted them to do. Verse 6. So they came to Luz, which was in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, and he and all the people that were with him. And he built an altar, and he called the place El Bethel, because God had appeared unto him 
and he fled from the face where he had fled from uh, the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak tree, and the name of it was called Alon Bakuth. Now, why is that significant? Everything's going good. Everything's going great. People are stepping out of the way and say, man, here comes Israel and his gang. And in the midst of all that joy and happiness, they have a servant to die. Rebecca's nurse. Rebecca's mate. Rebecca, Rebecca's servant. And you know what? Then our text begins for today. They got up and went on. They weren't disrespectful to that woman, but they buried her in what was necessary, and they moved on. And then just a short way, a short ways later, they have a child born, and then Rachel dies, and what? They bury her, and they move on. See, God's people, what, what the need of the hour today is, just move on. Just keep going. Just keep uh, spreading the gospel in any way that you see, any way that you can, if it's on the internet, or if it's door knocking, or if it's preaching on a street corner somewhere, keep going. Keep moving. Continue no matter what the problem is, could be. Now, uh, I'll enter this, and then we're going to go to our last, our, our last point will be done. But, uh, I think it was when Sarah died, I'm not sure. Uh, says they grieved for 30 days. You know, uh, we can really get into boo-hoo then, can't we? And I, I believe America's about one of the worst. You ever been to a black funeral? They make us look sad. I mean, they go down to the funeral. They have a nurse there for when people pass out. Very, very unusual funeral. We need to move on. You, can, you, you can't change one thing. So just move on. So despite these really horrific things, they just kept moving. Why? That was God's plan. Which is just keep going. You know what his plan is for New Testament Baptist Church? Just keep spreading the gospel. Just keep preaching. Just keep teaching. Just keep door knocking. Whatever the Lord is bidding your heart with, do it. Well, he ain't giving me anything. Well, look. You know, I, it, it's very difficult for me to believe that God hasn't given something to a saved person. You know what? If you say, well, I just don't, I don't think he's got anything for me. We'll make you call in an election short. Sure. Right? And, and so... Uh, then we as the Lord's people, we need to be an active people, a motivated people, a people that just follows the Great Commission and, and, and move on. Verse 20. Drop down to verse 20. And Jacob set a pillar upon a grave, and it is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. And Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the Tower of Eder. Now, I want you to see he sets up one last pillar and he keeps moving. He keeps going. Rachel died. Is the wife he loved the best. I think she probably wasn't the first choice and he made that choice in the flesh. Uh, Leah was a more godly woman by far. Uh, and, uh, but he made a pillar and he moved on. He put a place where you could see it. Now, he had two people to die. He'd set up two pillars, one unto God, one unto the memory of Rachel. It's just like David's tombstone up there. That's exactly the same thing, same principle. Now, uh, now it was time to move on. And that's exactly what they did. Think about the last year. The house is pretty empty. Do you want to boo-hoo or do you want to move on? I'm not a good doer. I, I, I'm not one to get down and say, well, it's time to quit. No, the time to quit is either one or two times. When he calls me home, or he says to his people, it's love, come up here. Mm -hmm. 
That's, that's the getting off place. I don't, I don't see anything different, do you? So, what we as a church people together need to do is just get on our knees before God and say, hey, here we are, use us. And, and it, it may be very something very simple. Uh, you ever thought about the widow with her cruise of oil that never ran out? That little, that little flower, she'd go in there and always be just a little bit more. And you know what? He didn't give her abundance. She made one cake at a time, didn't she? God's man was always first, and there was always one for her and her boy. See, if we put first things first, God's going to bless it. If we have things in the right order, God's going to be with us. And if we don't, we're going to be the mess. I want to look forward in 2020, don't you? Mm -hmm. uh, I want to see some good things.